The Heavy 9 is my aftermarket housing design for the Leopold FC980C and FC980M keyboards. I want today to show you what the unboxing and assembly process looks like. Each Heavy 9 comes in my new universal packaging system, which includes a custom EVA insert uh, that is specific to the housing design that you've ordered. They always will come with this new EVA foam plug, which allows the box to serve as a storage unit for uh, assembled keyboards, uh, but also to fully protect the housing in transit when it hasn't been assembled with the keyboard inside yet. So uh, once you've installed the keyboard and you want to use it with the keycaps, just uh, remove and uh, dispose of or otherwise store the plug and it will fit perfectly. Inside the housing, the first thing you'll see is the small parts box. And I'll just open that up to give you a sense of what's inside. There are these elastic bands. Sometimes before the, when the boxes are new, they'll have a tendency to pop open as the EVA pushes against them. There are magnets here on the top, which create a sort of catch, which you should be able to hear there. Uh, but again, when the boxes are new and they haven't been sort of trained into position, uh, it's useful to have these elastic bands, which you can put on each end, and uh, it will sort of compress it down. So you can also, of course, uh, always store it with these elastic bands in place. You will also get um, an adapter plate. This adapts the small breakout PCB on either of the two keyboards uh, to fit in the rear cover plate of my housing, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. You get a small box of parts, which includes uh, L wrenches, if you don't have hex wrenches that you like, use, and prefer, and also some uh, a sheet of bump-ons, and uh, I've already applied some of those, and I'll show you what that looks like. Inside the housing, you will also receive a product credential folio, as I'm pompously calling it, and all that is is an individually numbered booklet that gives you a sense of uh, where your product was in the uh, manufacturing run. This is the first run of heavy nines, and so the numbers are going to be somewhere between uh, 1 and 200. And here is the housing itself. This particular version is a K2 finish, uh, which is a textured white, and it includes the wool felt acoustic dampener option. First thing we'll do is simply remove the rear cover plate. We also now don't ship the housings with screws in every position because I realized everyone is going to have to take the rear cover plate off, so we might as well save you a little bit of trouble and uh, only have two screws to remove. The remaining rear cover plate screws will be in the parts pack. Also, you may notice uh, that under an area which is normally hidden by the screw uh, when the product is assembled, you'll see a little area on the, um, the part that doesn't have full powder coating coverage. That's unfortunately just a necessary byproduct of the powder coating process. It has to be hung from a wire um, so that the part can be electrically charged to attract the powder. And so we put it here in this location because it's normally hidden when the screw is on top. Another feature I'd like to point out here is that the Heavy 9, unlike previous uh, Norbauer housings, actually has the standoffs built into the plate. And we've managed to achieve that without having the rear side of the standoffs be visible in any way. So it's just a slight cosmetic improvement. And uh, these are very firmly riveted in place. If you were doing a FC980C assembly, which is the Topra version of this keyboard, then you will use all four standoffs. If you are doing the MX version, the FC980M, you'll only use these two standoffs and these will be um, just left in place without anything attached to them. So we can start by um, putting in place the acoustic dampener. If you wanted, you could put some kind of adhesive on the back here, but honestly just having it flop around is fine because it will be held in place using the adapter plate. So the adapter plate you get will look like this. However, this one sample I have, uh, I ac accidentally over-torqued one of the screws and um, ruined the threads on it. So uh, I'm going to be using this other sample that I have, which looks, li looks slightly different, but is functionally equivalent. But it's a worthwhile thing to note that these two screw holes here um, on yours, it'll look like this are quite small and very fine threads. 
They unfortunately have to be because of the size of the breakout PCB and the positioning of the parts. There's no other way to screw it into the adapter plate. So we have to use a super, super tiny screw. And threads like that in metal are very sensitive. So just be careful not to over torque the screw when you're attaching it because you can destroy the threads as I have done on this plate. For whatever it's worth, if you do that on one of them, it's actually totally fine. You can survive with just one screw, but it's just something to bear in mind. Now, I've included L-wrenches. Um, there are three L-wrenches here, and your box will have four. It will actually include one entirely superfluous L-wrench, which I included in error, apologies. I'm gonna go ahead and use my own preferred hex wrenches just because they're the tools that I normally always use. So obviously if you have hex wrenches that you like and prefer, by all means use them. These are just included for people who don't necessarily have keyboard implements lying around. So I think the first, uh, I'm gonna first start with the FC980C, which is the Topra version of this keyboard, and show you what that installation looks like. The process is actually very similar between the two. The only difference really is um, what happens with the larger of the two breakout PCBs. And I'll explain here what I mean by breakout PCBs in case you're not familiar with the concept. So this is a keyboard um, which has been removed from its housing, the FC980C. I unfortunately, in the process of moving recently, uh, seem to have misplaced my uh, FC980C and FC980M exterior housings. Um, but the process is pretty straightforward to remove this plate and PCB from the housing. You just uh, flip it over, remove the screws, and pop the two uh, plastic pieces apart. Since you're not going to be using them, it doesn't actually even matter if you destroy them. Um, if you have any questions though, um, and you don't, you can't quite figure out what to do with your housing or how to get your plate out of the housing, just send us an email at shop at norbauer.com and uh, of course we'll be happy to help you. In any case, the result will be you'll get this plate and PCB uh, that comes out of the housing along with this breakout PCB and sub breakout PCB. They'll be attached in this manner if you just unscrew everything. And so what we need to do now is get the plate attached to our housing and then figure out a way to route the USB to the exterior of the housing. So I think the best way to do that is to start by removing the, uh, the two breakout PCBs from this connector. Generally speaking, the best way to do that is to use your fingernails on either side of the connector uh, don't yank on the cables because you can pull the cables out of their pin locations, which is not optimal. So it's best to sort of um, remove the connectors at the plastic part, which you do just like that. Now we will screw the smaller of the two breakout PCBs onto my adapter plate. The, again, yours will look like that, but this one is pretty similar. So you want to take the smaller of the two screws and align the part of the breakout PCB that has the USB connector against the edge. And then simply use the tiniest screws you have and the ma matching hex wrench to screw it into place. Now we can attach the adapter plate to its position on the Heavy 9 rear cover plate, the two little standoffs that are here. Now I think the next step, best next step, is to attach the plate to the housing. This will be done with the largest screws that you have, and they use the 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. So we want to just, uh, again, by the way, I've already attached these rubber bump-ons. These are new and improved bumpers that are um, entirely made in the United States. They have a low surface energy adhesive, which is particularly well suited to adhering to powder coat. It's always a challenge getting things to adhere, especially to textured powder coats, um, but this stuff adheres seriously well. The keyboard plate attaches to 
the housing via five mounting points, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. The same is true on the FC980M, the MX version of this keyboard. They're actually, uh, in that respect, identical. So what I like to do is attach all of the screws, but barely torque them, such that there's a lot of play between the plate and the housing, because otherwise you may find that it's hard to get all of the screws in due to the alignment being slightly off. And you also want to have freedom of movement so that you can get the keycaps perfectly aligned to their through holes in the housing. And I'll show you in a moment what that looks like. So now I have five screws in place, but just lightly so. You can actually shake it and it still moves around. I want to make sure none of them is fully torqued. Yeah. So now what I like to do is insert an L wrench or a hex wrench, flip it over while keeping that hex wrench in place. And then I will line up the keys as best as I can. And then I'll torque the screw from behind totally in place. Now that that's tightly torqued down and I have the key alignment as I want, I can go ahead and screw the others fully into place. As always with hex head screws, don't go overboard because you can always strip the head if you go a little too crazy with the torque. Now we want to attach the larger of the two breakout PCBs to the rear cover plate via its standoffs. The purpose of this is just to have it not flop around as the keyboard is jostled. There is no actual exit point or connector or anything like that on this larger breakout PCB. Now we want to orient the plate in this manner, such that the USB connector on the smaller breakout PCB is headed in the direction of the spacebar. If we had flipped the keyboard over, spacebar is here. So the ribbon cable on the larger of the two breakout PCBs has this connector, and one side has metal bits, metal pins visible on it. The other side is just bare plastic. You want to make sure that the part with the metal pins is facing up. Now, in order to insinuate this connector into its correct position on the main PCB, you have to sort of angle the plate a little bit because there's not a ton of slack. But it's not too hard. You'll get a nice sort of satisfying click when you pop it into place, which will let you know that you've actually done it right. And then you want to insert the connector into the through hole first, and then let the plate fall into place. You want to take care not to let this plate end, end in first, because if you do, then this happens, and you can't get the plate in. So this is very much the way to go. Now we can flip the keyboard over and install the plate screws. So now we have what should be a fully functional Heavy 9 Topra keyboard. Of course, there is another version of this, which is the FC980M, which has some slightly different uh, breakout PCBs. So I'm going to go ahead and take this Topra keyboard out of the Heavy 9 and show you what the differences are. As a reminder, on the MX version of this keyboard, these two standoffs will not be used. The principal difference between the FC980M and FC980C's uh, C keyboards for our purposes are the, um, br the two breakout PCBs, or more, more precisely this larger breakout PCB. Now, the larger of the two breakout PCBs connects to the keyboard using a pin connector, which can actually be popped off. I don't recommend doing this popping off because it's a little bit tricky actually getting it back into place. But should that happen in the process, uh, just make sure that you install it in this orientation with the wire 
running towards the side of the keyboard. These, uh, these pins on the end here, there are 10 of them, need to fit into these 10 holes. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop that into place right now. And we'll proceed with my installation procedure, which, which um, is slightly fiddly, but I think is actually safer than uh, popping this off and, uh, and reinstalling it. So what we should do first is install the switch plate into the housing. As before, you want to not torque the screws down fully, just get them sort of roughly into place. Then we'll flip the keyboard over, align it, torque one screw from behind, flip it over again, and then torque all the rest into place. Now, indeed, the tricky part. So what we have to do is use these tiny little screws and our tiny little hex wrench to attach this smaller breakout PCB to its position on the breakout PCB adapter plate. However, we have very little clearance in which to do that. So what I'm going to do is insert the plate in one end here of, its, of the plate well, the sort of lip that holds it in place. I'm going to get them as close as I possibly can. I'm going to take this smaller breakout PCB and I'm going to align the two holes at the front of it with the two holes on the adapter plate. Um, there here and here on the front, and then, somewhat awkwardly, get these tiny little screws into place. And there we go. So again, it's these two screws at the front that I've attached. And it's possible that while you were installing it, you might have pulled a little bit on this larger breakout PCB. And just to be sure that that hasn't been the case, you want to give it a little bit of a push to make sure that it's still fully seated in its connector. Now, in normal use, this is just going to hang down from the PCB, and that's totally fine because it's a, it's a pretty strong pressure fit between those pins and the pin connector. You just want to make sure that it's connected before you actually um, seal the housing up. And again, we, now that we have the cable in place, we want to come in with the connector down first, and then let the other side fall into place. Then we'll screw the whole assembly together. And here we have an assembled Heavy 9 with Cherry MX switches. I want to thank everyone who supported this project. If you have any questions, of course, email shop at norbauer.com. We're happy to walk you through anything that wasn't clear from the video.